Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's Michael Wooten here, uh, Chief Executive uh, Officer of CFA. Uh, welcome to our uh, live streaming event uh, that we're holding tonight for the uh, gathering of feedback in relation to the Fire Services Review. Uh, I'm pleased to be joined tonight by uh, Mark Sullivan, our Executive Director of uh, Communications and Legal Services, Margaret Thomas, uh, Acting Executive Director of People and Culture, and Deputy Chief Officer uh, John Haynes. Um, before we start to uh, uh, answer some questions and gather your feedback. Um, I thought I might just make a few uh, introductory remarks in relation to the review and uh, how CFA uh, intends to uh, respond to the review and make its submission. Um, the, the review, as you're probably aware if you uh, had a look at the terms of reference, is, is very wide ranging. Uh, it covers a whole range of aspects of CFA in terms of its resourcing, its operations, uh, its management and its culture. Uh, it'll look at a, a, a range of things under those headings, but uh, including what resources are necessary to ensure Victoria is properly equipped and fire ready, uh, the interoperability between our fire agencies, our management structures, uh, culture and work practices, uh, and how volunteers, importantly, uh, should be supported. Uh, it'll cover our entire organisation and, and the things that we do. Um, well, since we've started talking to the CFA community about uh, the review, there's been uh, uh, certainly a, a degree of feedback around uh, the time frames that are attached to the review, uh, and we appreciate that they are very tight. Um, the government clearly wants to have this review concluded before uh, the fire season gets into full swing, um, uh, and as a result of that, we need to have our submission uh, uh, into the uh, review by the 31st of August. Uh, which really only gives us ten we uh, two weeks uh, from uh, yesterday to uh, to make that submission. Um, the review is is uh, accepting uh, written submissions from a range of stakeholders, uh, including general uh, members of the of the public, uh, and it uh, intends to have its uh, um, final report and recommendation submitted to the Minister for Emergency Services by the thirtieth of September. We see the review um, as a really positive way for us to talk about CFA and some of the great things that we do, um, but we also are very open to the notion of improvement uh, and constructive change uh, for the organisation. Because at the end of the day, for us, it's about the service we provide to the community and any way that we can improve that service is a good thing for the community and for CFA. Uh, it doesn't affect our mission, which continues to be the protection of lives and property and we'll base our submission around some of those things. Uh, I know people, some people are concerned about the review and what it means for CFA, uh, and we understand and appreciate these concerns. But we are an organisation that's already gone through considerable change. We're well versed uh, in the area of inquiries and reviews. Uh, so uh, we see this, as I said, as an opportunity. These reviews are going to occur from time to time. Uh, CFA is a broad ranging organisation with a high profile in the community. Uh, it's not unexpected that uh, from time to time people would want to have a look at the organisation and, uh, and talk about things that we might do um, better and differently. But we can adapt to change and I think we've proven that over many years. Uh, it's unclear what the nature of the recommendations may be coming out of the uh, review, but we'll certainly work with the review team uh, in helping them uh, to have as much understanding and information about CFA as possible. Uh, and one of the key things that we need to, to understand is the views of our members. So bearing in mind we have uh, a very short time frame to gather uh, feedback uh, and consult with our members. Uh, we're doing that this afternoon and tonight and through a range of other uh, forums uh, that we, we're putting in place. Uh, bearing in mind, as I said, we have to have a written submission by the end of August. But we think it's really important to get an understanding of what you think and the changes you think could be made in the context of the terms of reference of the review. We've had uh, some really good questions and feedback come through uh, earlier today in the session we held this afternoon, uh, and hopefully we'll get uh, more of that feedback um, tonight. So uh, I think there's an email address and an SMS uh, mobile phone number that's been provided to people who are participating, and if you'd like to uh, send in your questions, um, and we can start to uh, talk about some of your issues that you see is important uh, and, and also just to gather your feedback so we can help uh, formulate our submission. Okay, do you want to run through some of the stuff? So we have got some earlier questions from this afternoon's session. So um, perhaps, John, if you'd like to maybe address some questions around interoperability to start with. Um, 
Okay, uh, one of the questions uh, this afternoon was about um, uh, does the review provide an opportunity to improve interoperability? And uh, uh, well, yes, it does. And uh, not only that, but we're already uh, uh, in that space at the moment. So uh, uh, we work through um, uh, interoperability with our, uh, our new breathing apparatus uh, with MFB, um, police, and uh, SES. Um, uh, we're probably going to look at, uh, or we are looking at them at the moment for structural helmets, uh, PPC interoperability, uh, and uh, we've already started on um, on our fire truck interoperability uh, uh, with MFB, uh, with uh, pumpers especially in the in the first case. Our strategy is also our service delivery strategy, especially, um, has got a feature about uh, uh, heading down the track of interoperability, um, to getting the the best uh, value for. All public money and uh, to, to get uh, uh, you know uh, some uh, increased uh, benefits in, in training if we have uh, similar or the same gear. So um, uh, I think yes it will, um, we're already down the track and uh, I think we can only improve through the, uh, the review. Good, thanks John. Um, another question we got earlier today was around can you assure us that the review and the union won't remove volunteers from service? And, uh, this afternoon we talked about uh, one of the underpinning philosophies of our submission which would be around our current model of service delivery which uh, as everyone would know is, is very much volunteer based uh, supported by uh, um, a number of uh, integrated uh, brigades so uh, our intention would be to demonstrate the, uh, the benefits of the current service delivery model acknowledging that it can be improved but it is underpinned by a volunteer based service and, uh, and where needed um, adjustments can be made to our service delivery to improve it uh, and as John mentioned the service delivery strategy uh, goes to some of those issues in terms of climate change, uh, population uh, growth and decline in some areas, uh, demographic change and a range of other external factors that we need to take consideration of as we continue to think about how we do better service delivery into the future. Uh, okay another uh, question from uh from uh, the uh, uh, the audience, if you like, um, uh, there is concern among some volunteers that this is an effort by UFU to increase its control of CFA. Uh, can you al allay those fears? Yeah. So we talked a little bit today, in fact, about the role of different stakeholders in the review, um, and certainly uh, UFU is a key stakeholder. Uh, as is VFBV, CFA, MFB, uh, DELP, and a number of other key agencies. Uh, my sense is that we all have an equal opportunity to provide input to the review uh, and from the discussions I've had with uh, David O'Byrne who's conducting the review, uh, he certainly has indicated that he uh, intends to conduct that review in a very open manner, uh, with a, starting with a clean slate. Uh, I think he will give uh, equal voice and uh, equal listening to, to each of those key stakeholders uh, and uh, I don't think it's about control of the organisation in any sense, I think it's very much more about uh, service delivery, uh, interoperability and uh, some of the other key items raised in the terms of reference. Okay, um, another question today was um, uh, uh, do the CFA um, MFB borders need to be realigned to improve service delivery? Um, uh, personally, um, I don't think so. Uh, we've got um, a great surge capacity um, in our uh, metropolitan uh, ring, if you like, of uh, District 7, 14, 13 and, and 8, um, and uh, the state relies on that surge capacity. Uh, we already provide uh, a really good service in that area, um, and uh, there may be things uh, through a review, a review that we can actually improve uh, and modify, but uh, um, the alignment of a border um, I don't think will, will make a great difference to service delivery. It's more about the, the people and their skills and, uh, and what we do with them. So um, I think it's, uh, um, you know, we provide a great service and we should be proud of it already. Um, we've got a couple other questions. Um, how can the re review happen so quickly? Yeah, and I think that goes to the timeline issue that we discussed at the outset. Um, it, it, my sense is given the timelines and, and the need to uh, have the recommendations concluded before the fire season, it, it, the question that comes to my mind is in how much depth 
can the review go? So um, I, I suspect that um, will be relatively high level, uh, which will enable uh, maybe some key recommendations to be made, but that doesn't mean they need to be acted upon immediately. So we may well see uh, a range of recommendations, some which can be addressed in the very short term and some which may take uh, some months past a fire season to actually be properly considered uh, in terms of their implications and their benefits. So I think the review piece will happen in the time frames that the government's announced. Uh, the implementation of any recommendations that government might choose to adopt uh, may take uh, some time longer. Okay, uh, further question is, uh, what, what does the CFA recommend for brigades and individual members when submitting their reports? Are there any do's and don'ts when you uh, individuals put it in? Well, I don't think there are, to be honest. Uh, my, my assessment would be if individuals are putting in submissions, then they need to decide for themselves the issues that they want to raise and uh, the matters that they want to be covered in their submissions. I don't think it's for CFA or any organisation, in fact, to be um, suggesting to people what they do or don't include in their submissions. Anything that's relevant to the terms of reference, I think, uh, and it was in, within the scope of the review. Uh, are matters that individuals need to assess in their own minds and uh, and put forward what they believe to be important to them uh, as is their as is their democratic right. Alrighty, uh, another one. Uh, can you explain what the Career Firefighter Registration Board is all about, and why not Career and Volunteer Board? Mm. That's a really good question, and it's one that um, we're trying to get a better understanding of ourselves. Um, the notion of a firefighter registration board uh, was raised in the lead up uh, to last year's election. Um, uh, there are registration boards in place uh, both in Victoria and across Australia for other occupations. Uh, I'm not so sure about firefighters, career or volunteer. Uh, what we're trying to do at the moment is get a better understanding of what some of those registration boards look like and what they do and what some of the benefits might be uh, for, for having that sort of a mechanism in place. Uh, and if we were to decide to support such a notion, uh, I think it would be really important that we would address the issue of equity both for volunteers and career firefighters in the context of anything we do in our submission. Okay, and uh, one from this afternoon we haven't covered yet is, um, will the submissions to the review be publicly available and will CFA's submission be available to members? Yeah, so th that was a specific issue raised uh, when I met with David O'Byrne last week and it's very clear that the intention is that all submissions made to uh, the review will be made public unless the author of that, uh, that submission specifically requests otherwise. So I would expect that CFA's submission um, would be made a public document uh, once the review um, has received it uh, and therefore yes, it will be available to all our members. Alrighty. And a uh, final one from this afternoon, um, uh, what level of influence does CFA have compared to you if you on the review? Yeah, I think we sort of, I touched on that a little bit before. I think, you know, we've, from my sense, uh, we have uh, uh, equal levels of influence and uh, uh, government is uh, prepared to listen to uh, the views of, of a whole variety of stakeholders and, and the review, I'm sure, will take a similar approach. Uh, and, and then I think try and distill what they believe is uh, beneficial recommendations out of those submissions. So uh, I think our influence is, is no less or no more than, than any other stakeholder that's uh, involved in the review. Uh, another one online, um, it's probably mine I reckon too. Is it time for CFA to consider other models of service delivery? Um, staff only stations retain models before they are forced upon the organisation. Um, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we already uh, look at um, different models and different ways we can improve service delivery, and as, especially uh, with uh, you know uh, exponential growth in some areas, uh, decline in others. Um, our model of fire station, firefighter, and fire truck um, is under challenge in different places. Uh, so. Uh, we do look at different models, uh, we weigh up um, uh, the pros and cons of different models um, and uh, how we uh, implement or, or not implement is really uh, uh, part of uh, a consultation with a wider view uh, about uh, whether we pilot some of this stuff in the future or not and uh, part of the service delivery strategy is about um, accelerating innovation, looking at different ways of, uh, of uh, providing service 
um, and really we have to look at different ways because um, our model is not sustainable in some parts uh, are now. So um, uh, we've already you know, started to use um, helicopters for instance uh, uh, for the last few years in Sea Lake uh, through the harvest period, uh, mainly because um, our key firefighters uh, are on grain trucks and, and earning a living uh, uh, gathering the harvest in. Um, and we're looking to extend uh, you know, aircraft in, in some areas uh, provided for that uh, high risk environment. So we're already doing some stuff, um, already looking at uh, you know, different models. Um, uh, are they good, bad or ugly? Will they work in all places? No, um, but um, we're already in that space. All right, no more on the... At this stage? At this stage. Okay. Oh, I'm coming. Yeah. It's obviously a funny one, is it, John? <laughs> it must be a long. It must be a long one. So, if people are still. Uh, listening, we uh, would strongly encourage you to, uh, if you've got any questions or issues you wish to uh, raise with us, please please send them in and, um, and we can address them now. The questions will the review include the SES and an old hazards approach? Um, the SES isn't, uh, isn't uh, specifically mentioned or referred to. It seems to be very much uh, aimed at the fire agency, specifically CFA and MFB and it mentions um, public land uh, in one of the, um, the sub uh, points of the terms of reference. So that goes to obviously the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning. Um, so my, my, my understanding at the moment is no, uh, the SES uh, don't seem to be covered uh, in the strict terms of reference uh, that have been issued. Uh, it's very much focused on fire. All quiet on the on the online at this moment. One coming through. One coming through. Cool. So the, the, the question was, um, do we need uh, uh, career firefighters to provide uh, better service in um, out of metropolitan Melbourne that we CFA looks after? Um, uh, yeah, we do in, in parts, um, and it's, uh, uh, we uh, analyse um, service delivery standards and we work uh, uh, with volunteer fire brigades to improve their service delivery. Um, one of the uh, uh, the treatments for service delivery um, is uh, increasing our um, integrated fire brigades, uh, which we have done you know, over the last uh, you know, 10 years especially. Um, so what we're trying to do is to have a, a mixture of um, integrated volunteer brigades uh, in a space where um, uh, integrated brigades can support volunteer brigades around them. So um, uh, we're constantly uh, reviewing um, service delivery um, standards and uh, the ability of um, fire brigades to respond in a timely manner um, and um, as we do that um, you know, we will talk to fire brigades about uh, you know, what other options are for the future. So um, is it a blanket approach uh, required? No. Um, is it uh, targeted um, as per um, you know, support the volunteer brigades? Uh, yes it is and that's been our, our model for many years. Um, okay, the next one is, um, will this review hasten or slow up the restructure, and see if our restructure even more, um, even, that's even possible. 
If that's even possible. If that's even possible, yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so one of the things that uh, uh, we decided to take a, a firm approach on early after the review was announced was continue to implement initiatives across CFA that didn't directly conflict with the terms of reference of the review and that we thought were necessary to uh, continue to provide uh, better services to the communities uh, of Victoria. We think the uh, structural changes in fire and emergency management, uh, operational training and volunteerism and the second phase of financial services are part of that landscape. The review talks about looking at management structures. Uh, my interpretation of that is that uh, that would be limited uh, to more senior levels of the organisation uh, and I don't have a sense that it would affect the uh, proposals that we're currently consulting on in relation to structural change. So uh, we've made a decision to continue to proceed with consultation and implementation of those structural changes uh, and the review will uh, continue um, along its lines looking at management structures. So I, I see them as related but not, uh, not mutually exclusive. Okay, uh, another one online. Uh, will CFA raise the issue of restrictive industrial agreements that do not permit the CFA management to manage the organisation through the review? Um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure that uh, our submission will be focused on uh, our industrial arrangements. Uh, if we believe there are ways to improve the organisation uh, uh, with a focus on delivery um, of services to the community, then certainly we would raise those things. Um, uh, but I'm not sure uh, that they would go directly to limiting the reasons to industrial agreements. I think uh, there are a range of opportunities to improve our services and uh, we would cover those uh, in our submission. Uh, this is uh, uh, two questions. Um, as the CFA works with the MFB uh, more, will there be more look at introducing MFB radios into CFA trucks, not only for neighbouring brigades but second brigades, in as they often call to support MFB? So, um, uh, as, as most know, I think we've got uh, two different radio systems, MFB and uh, CFA, or three including uh, regional digital. Um, so. Um, in the, in the past uh, we've had uh, um, radios uh, in the, the surrounding brigades and also some, uh, some handheld portables. Uh, I think this is a question for, for long term interoperability um, into where we go as far as uh, radio networks for fire services and it would probably be a, a good uh, discussion point in a review about saying um, uh, what's our future for our, our communications that connect us uh, better not only fire services but also um, uh, an emergency services sector as well. So um, uh, I think it would be a good discussion point more than uh, uh, a solution at this point. Uh, and the second question is uh, in terms of infrastructure needed for new permanent firefighters, uh, what budget will pay for it? Yeah, so we're um, obviously uh, in, in a process with government in relation to uh, an additional 350 career firefighters, which uh, was a government uh, commitment upon their election, and we're working uh, very closely with government to uh, help them deliver that commitment, uh, and we expect that uh, as we implement that program, uh, it needs to be funded uh, by government for us to uh, to complete the deliverables including uh, the firefighters and, uh, and any infrastructure needs that might ar arise from the additional 350 uh, over the next um, uh, three to four years. Um, this one's about um, uh, consultation and how will CFA ensure its legislative requirements to consult with volunteers prior to any changes being made affecting them uh, to be done when the UFU is attempting to dictate these changes at the current EBA negotiations without volunteer involvement. So in summary, how do, how do CFA uh, do its legislative requirements for consultation uh, with EBA negotiations going on? Well, we'll do them the best we possibly can in the, in the constraints of the timelines. Uh, we have commitments to consult uh, with both Volunteer Fire Brigades Victoria uh, and as many volunteers as we can get to and this is obviously one example of trying to reach out and consult with people. 
uh, in relation to uh, any change that affects volunteers arising out of uh, enterprise agreement negotiations. Both the executive leadership team and the CFA board very clearly understand their obligations around uh, consultation with volunteers and uh, we'll ensure that we will consult with volunteers before uh, any uh, enterprise agreement uh, documents are, are concluded. Uh, we're getting uh, numerous ones mm, in there. That's good. Um, uh, next one, will CFA review its service delivery standards to reflect skills mix rather than uh, strictly a time-based measure? Um, the issue with that is that uh, uh, our time-based measure uh, is um, allocated to um, hazard class, uh, which is a, a signed off by the board in the, in the 1990s. Um, we, as part of our strategy and our performance measurement, um, are still measuring time, but um, we're going to actually have a focus on uh, performance outcome. So it's not only um, do you get there in a certain time, but it's uh, what do you do before, during and after an emergency. Uh, and we've been working with uh, the Monash uh, Injury Research Institute uh, to help us uh, with uh, um, actually working on uh, what uh, best things we need to do to spend our dollars on before, during and after to get a better outcome in performance. So um, uh, yes, we'll, we'll still uh, measure time and, uh, uh, and uh, we'll have to um, uh, publicise our, our um, service delivery uh, times uh, probably in the next 12 months. Uh, but at the same time, we're actually looking at uh, how better we can improve our performance uh, in public safety uh, to the community and with the community. So uh, it's a bit of a, a mixed bag. Yes, uh, time will stay, um, but we're also looking at how we better uh, provide the service. Um, next one, we'll see if I look at the over-servicing in particular areas. It's probably me still. Mm. Um, uh, Look, I think we, we need to uh, to look at the best way we can provide um, services to the community and with the community. Um, some places are, uh, are probably a little bit underdone in service. Um, some may a little bit be over servicing. Um, but in that, um, we, we do more than just um, structure and, and bushfires. And some of the uh, uh, fire brigades have actually specialised in, uh, in different areas uh, which provide a service beyond their fire brigade. Um, so uh, you may look at some places which may be uh, over-serviced, uh, but in that we've got uh, specialist vehicles uh, that actually uh, provide a, a wider footprint either in their, in their group, their district or, or the state. Um, so it's a constant thing. We look at um, our performance and uh, whether we can improve. Um, so we'll continue to do that. Um, uh, next question is for CFA, is this the first time this sort of review has happened to this scale? Um, it's the first time CFA has been involved in a review of this nature uh, and, and I say that uh, with confidence because it's been conducted under a piece of legislation called the Inquiries Act 2014 which is a very new piece of legislation and actually came out of a recommendation from uh, uh, the Bushfires Royal Commission in terms of the construct under which inquiries might be conducted. So uh, I think there's only ever been one other review of this nature under that legislation in Victoria and it's uh, ongoing at the moment. The, the fire service one is the second. So I think in summary CFA has been involved in a whole range of inquiries, uh, reviews, Royal Commissions uh, and other uh, processes but yes this is the first time this specific type of review has been used uh, for for not only CFA but uh, the fire services more generally. Uh, next question is: uh, With the August the thirty first time frame, will this suggest impacts and changes to the coming fire season and potentially how? <coughs> Do you want me to start off on that? You can if you want. To look um, well, I'm not too sure, but the uh, uh, the issue is that uh, look, we're already in preparation for the next next fire season. Um, we're already. Uh, doing our service uh, delivery preparedness programs um, as we speak and uh, uh, people have been in the field for the last couple of weeks ensuring that we're ready and uh, ready to go. Um, uh, depends on, you know, I, I think, you know, uh, how wide ranging uh, outcomes would be but um, uh, no matter what happens, um, I, I think uh, we still, uh, Victoria, have to provide a service uh, which we're ready to do. 
Um, so I, I think it had to be uh, minimal, if any. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, if there are particular recommendations that can be implemented very quickly and don't disrupt uh, our preparations um, uh, for the fire season, then they might be uh, adopted. But anything else, I think, would uh, would uh, be held over uh, pending uh, the fire season concluding. Uh, next question is, um, is the plan still to have a people and volunteerism directorate? And if so, how can it be the two existing directorates are building their structures in isolation? So Margaret might want to talk about the building process, but in terms of uh, the, the initial part of the question, is it still intended to have that directorate? Absolutely it is. Uh, and I don't think they are being built uh, in isolation, but you want to no, talk about No, and I can comment that. on that. We started the process of implementing these structures a couple of months ago, and some of the structures and different directors have went ahead, including the people and culture one. Um, and the design that has been uh, underway with the OTMV or leadership, um, um, volunteerism and, and learning uh, structure has been done, having in mind and the services and the team and the processes of the current people and culture structure and have of course in mind that those two directors will come together. But it's not only the alignment between the people and culture and the current OTMV structures that were considered but also how the, the, the OTMV uh, new structure is aligned with fire emergency and other support areas. So the integration, despite the phasing uh, process, we we're trying to work very close together and in this last couple of weeks uh, the teams have been meeting uh, with different members of those directors to make sure that the alignment is there. Good. Um, uh, next one is about the SDS, SDS service delivery standard is applied and measured differently across the state. How do we get consistency? Um, we're, we're currently um, uh, doing uh, an audit of um, uh, hazard um, identification has a class uh, two, three, and four, and uh, out of that, uh, well, we're ensuring that uh, the SDS uh, is right for uh, you know each um, has a class. So uh, for a volunteer uh, fire brigade has a class two, for instance, um, four minutes uh, uh, turnout, four minutes travel time, uh, which is part of our our, um, our our planning, our service delivery planning as well. Uh, and for an, inter an integrated brigade for um, class two has a um, 90 seconds turnout and six and a half minutes travel time. So um, uh, we've found some inconsistency um, through this. Uh, we're fixing that up now um, and uh, in preparation for uh, when we have to actually uh, publicise our, our um, uh, service delivery compliance uh, uh, in the next uh, you know, six to 12 months. Um, uh, Next one is about, can you please answer the question regarding the, uh, the budget for the 300 uh, staff firefighters and what impact will it have on the volunteer budget? Uh, uh, so this will be about the 350 career firefighters uh, government's commitment. Um, I don't expect it will have any impact on the volunteer uh, budget per se. We, uh, as I said earlier, are in a process working with government to cost out the impact on the budget of the 350 firefighters. Uh, and there are a number of different options about how that might be implemented. Each of those options have a different, uh, has a different cost attached to it and we're in discussions um, uh, in the last day or two, in fact, with government about what those options look like and what they may cost. Uh, we are making it clear that uh, those options all require additional budget uh, and can't be absorbed within uh, CFA's existing budget. Uh, another one for me, pretty much. Uh, will CFA keep the traditional assignment tables or would they look to taking on the MFB idea of closest truck is dispatched to a job? Um, currently we uh, we run assignment tables through uh, through ESTA, um, which is uh, you know uh, tables for risk uh, agreed to by the brigades. Um, uh, there is a, an option in the future sometime to go to radial search, um, but, but in that we ha really have to have um, some idea of um, our automatic vehicle location in our, our vehicles so we understand where, where they are so we can um, readily search them that way. So um, in the short term, uh, no, um, there's no, no view in my mind to change traditional assignment tables in the short term. Um, is this a, a potential for the future? Um, 
hundred percent. Um, uh, next question: Will the outcome of this review decide if we get a new chief uh, once you and Ferguson leaves? Uh, the short answer to that question is no. Uh, the board has already commenced a uh, recruitment uh, process to appoint a new chief officer, uh, and uh, that process is continuing um, and is not affected in any way by the review. Um, so it will uh, proceed. And, uh, and the review will do its work, but the two are separate pieces of work. Um, our follow up on is, is there a budget for this review and ongoing funding for any outcomes? Uh, so I'll interpret the question as has CFA got a budget for the review? Uh, and the short answer is the cost to CFA of pulling together a submission uh, and participating in the review is, uh, is quite small and uh, in fact will just need to be absorbed into our existing budgetary arrangements. Um, what was the second part of the question, John? Uh, uh, and uh, funding for any outcomes. I'm going funding for any outcomes. Well, that's a question I think that we, it remains to be answered. Uh, depending on the recommendations, and more importantly, depending on the minister and the government's appetite for adopting the recommendations, that may or may not lead to uh, budgetary uh, requirements. Uh, we would uh, deal with those uh, when we know what the government's response to the review is. Okay, um, next one's about, as far as MFB and CFA boundaries, um, how far out would the urban response area be? Uh, what are your thoughts about CFA taking on an RFS structure for rural brigades uh, on the border of urban rural areas, as this seems to be what members are hearing? So, um, uh, first question about how far out would a boundary be? Um, uh, not too sure how long is a piece of string. Um, there, the only um, area um, uh, that has got any other boundary on it is a metropolitan growth area, which is a long-term planning um, overview, um, which uh, which uh, it, you know is a is a long way out from uh, MFB boundary. Um, the RFS structure, uh, the RFS um, uh, in the same town um, uh, can have uh, two fire brigades, so. Um, you can have uh, a town like uh, Tokemore, for instance, uh, on the border um, of Victoria. Uh, you can have uh, RFS uh, fire truck or trucks in the shed, and uh, two kilometres down the road, you can have a New South Wales fire rescue uh, pumper in the shed. Um, is that uh, efficient in the long term and uh, you know, double handling and, and double um, uh, uh, commitment of, of officers, etc.? Uh, maybe, maybe not, but uh, uh, that's how uh, fire rescue and, and RFS um, operate um, in New South Wales. Um, uh, this one's about along the lines of alternative service delivery. Can you discuss the idea of uh, peak response trucks from hub integrated stations to support volunteer stations as required rather than integrating. All right now I understand that to be um, whether it's hub integrated stations or hub career only stations um, and peak response uh, is something that the ambulance service do uh, where uh, they uh, put their resources uh, at the times of day when they're most going to have uh, their uh, uh, their peak response. So for instance um, uh, if it's uh, between uh, 2 o'clock and 6 o'clock in the afternoon there's their peak response, uh, they put the bulk of resources around that time frame and are uh, lean at the other resources, uh, resources other times. Um, at the moment with the 10-14 um, uh, fire station model, um, our resources are there all the time. Um, so uh, if we have to go down to um, a, a, uh, an ambulance type peak response model, uh, then we actually um, uh, have to change our, our whole shift uh, arrangements and our and our EBA arrangements in that as well. Um, and uh, the idea of um, uh, hub integrated stations is about uh, sometimes um, uh, we've got uh, some issues with day manning in certain areas. Um, a, a, a centrally located uh, integrated brigade uh, could actually support uh, volunteer brigades in those times uh, when uh, they they're struggling a little bit uh, with their numbers. 
uh, and still provide uh, a good community service uh, within our service delivery parameters. Um, so if that's what's meaning by the question, uh, um, that's uh, you know, you know, something where we're all actually really doing at Ocean Grove at the moment, where Ocean Grove uh, Integrated Brigade um, go out to the Ballerine Peninsula to support uh, local brigades uh, at the moment. So that's already in place at one location. Good. Um, uh, question is the announcement of the new Chief Officer tied in with this review timing and if so, how? Uh, yeah, well it's similar to the question we were asked before. No, it's not. Um, the new Chief Officer process is underway. Uh, when the board uh, have uh, found the best candidate for the role, um, uh, they would uh, appoint somebody regardless of uh, the stage that the review might be at. Okay, uh, all quiet on, online at the moment. Okay. So we'll just maybe give people who are online another couple of minutes if they've got any final questions that they might want to um, submit through to us or uh, any feedback that we can uh, take on board. It doesn't just have to be questions. Okay, I think on that basis we might uh, draw things to a close. Um, can I just, uh, on behalf of uh, uh, John, Margaret and, and Mark, thank uh, everybody for uh, participating tonight. Uh, can I particularly thank uh, people who uh, took the time and, and made the effort to submit some really good questions to us. That really helps uh, us understand what the issues are for you. So that's the main, uh, the main purpose of this session. Um, but it's by no means the only opportunity that you will have to provide your input to the review. Uh, there is an email address, reviewfeedback at cfa.vic.gov.au, which you can use uh, as we lead up to uh, the end of August and we submit our written submission. Um, so I would encourage you, if you still have input that you'd like to make, then that's an opportunity for it. Um, and uh, once uh, we've made our submission and the, all the submissions are made public, then people will be able to review CFAs. Uh, and remember, you also have an opportunity to make a direct submission to the review uh, as an individual, if, uh, if you so desire. So on that basis, um, we say thank you and uh, we'll close the session. Good night.